Okay, so we're here with Katie Steckles at the Centre for Mathematical Sciences in Cambridge. Katie, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name's Katie and uh, I'm a mathematician, which I guess means that I study maths at school and at university. And when I finished uni, I did a PhD, which is a little bit of research into maths. And what is it that you like most about doing mathematics? So my favourite thing about doing maths is the fact that there is always another way to approach a problem. So if you're kind of stuck on a bit of maths or you're trying to understand something or you're trying to kind of answer a maths question, um, if, you're, if you're stuck or you're not sure, there is always another way to look at it. There's always another way to explain something or kind of um, another approach that you can take. Uh, and I think that's something that's almost always true with all kinds of different bits of maths and that's one of the things I love about it. And can you give us an example of like a favourite mathematical moment where that was the case, where being able to look at it in different ways helped? Uh, I think that, so the, the research that I did during my PhD was to do with um, what are called n-body problems, so looking at um, objects moving around with gravity. So say you might have planets, uh, kind of gravity is causing the planets to move towards each other, you might have maybe atoms on a tiny scale that are attracted to each other by gravity. Um, and the, the particular ones that I was studying was what happens when you have more than two things, because kind of when you've got two things it's more obvious what's going on, one of them will kind of orbit around the other. Um, but if you've got more than two things, they're all kind of moving towards each other in different ways, so it becomes a much more complicated problem. Uh, and I was in particular looking at uh, flat kind of two-dimensional patterns, so objects, that, I guess, moving around on a piece of paper. Uh, and the question that we were trying to answer is what possible shapes can they move around in? What If you kind of stuck a pen on a planet, what shape would it draw as it moves around? Uh, and we had uh, a, a kind of, the problem we had with this was that we didn't know what the answer was going to be, what these different types of shapes would be. And rather than having any kind of approach to this that was systematic, we just found a lot of examples. So we, we kind of took uh, some that people had already heard of that we knew about already. There were some examples that we just kind of found by accident, by kind of trying different numbers, um, and some that we kind of guessed might exist and had a look for them. And once we'd got all these examples together, rather than kind of knowing what was going to happen, we just kind of looked for patterns in the information that we had. So each of the examples we kind of studied in quite a lot of depth. Uh, we tried to visualise them in different ways. So we'd have uh, maybe pictures and I kind of put together some little animations of the things moving around so that we could see um, not just how they move in space but through time as well, which makes it more complicated. Um, and once we had all of these different examples, we could look at the collection together. Uh, and it was actually quite near the end of my PhD that we actually looked at it and said, okay, well, these ones have similarities, these ones maybe form a pattern, these ones go together, and we could actually classify them into different types so that we actually ended up with a description of what all the possible shapes might be, uh, which was quite nice. And we were also looking at kind of very symmetrical ones, so we are looking at what symmetries they would have, whether you can reflect the shape, whether you can rotate the shape or, or push it forward in time or push it backwards in time. Um, so it was uh, a, a difficult problem, and... You know, you might expect that in maths you would be looking at something and you would know what to do next at each stage. We didn't really know. Uh, and the approach that we took was try a load of different examples and see if anything comes out of that. Um, and that's what we did. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds like a really exciting process. And um, in the same kind of vein, in general, how important do you think is it to be creative in mathematics? I think, I think it's absolutely crucial. I mean, the, the thing about mathematics is a lot of people see it as being quite a serious subject, quite a, a kind of logical subject. And I'm not denying there are definitely aspects of maths that are like that. So you've got, you know, logic and you need to follow the rules and everything kind of makes sense. But I have never met a mathematician who was not creative, who was not an imaginative person. Uh, because so often in maths, you can't just do the thing you've always been doing because you'll just end up with the same results again. You need to make a little leap. You need to kind of try something new. Um, and so often when you're doing maths, you'll find that there's a step which doesn't really follow on from the previous step. Uh, and you're kind of thinking, why have you done that? But when you get to the end, it's obvious why, because then it makes sense. Uh, and it's that kind of creativity, that kind of having a nice little idea of, of where to go with it um, that is really crucial to maths. Thank you very much. Thanks.